Welcome everyone to the light of Zion. The light of Zion is our God's word. Yahuwah's word is a lamp for our feet and the light for the road that we travel. Shine your light, O Yahuwah, let it lead us to your holy mountains. Shine your light, O Yahuwah, let it lead us back to Zion. Shine your light and let it guide us on our journey back to you. Shine your light for it is good for me. And with that, I say, welcome to the light of Zion. Hello. It is my pleasure to come to you again uh, with another presentation from the light of Zion. Uh, I hope you are being blessed and all is going well with you uh, and you are enduring until the end. So I hope this message or these presentations brings encouragement to you and fortify you in your faith as you keep on holding on until the end. So we are going to go on with today's presentation and this one is titled Are you doing what is needed for you to be saved? Are you doing what is needed, what is required for you to be among the ones that will be saved at the end of all this? So join me as we go along on this presentation and this is a presentation by the light of Zion and our website you can check us out uh, thelightofzion.com uh, there you will find many presentation and many articles or things materials that will help you in researching for your God and also understanding what is written and what is about to come, what is about to happen until we reach the end of all this. So again let's move along, hopefully you, it will bring many blessings to you. So the question is, what is your view of, of being saved? What is your idea of being saved? So you may have heard so many people use the phrase, I'm good, I am saved, I am saved. Some would say, I have received Jesus and I am saved. But the question is this, What are you saved from? Are you saved from what? Some may say they have been saved from, from sin. But the question is again is, do, does that mean that they do not they do not sin any longer? Does that mean that they are not immune to sin, that they are clean, they don't they are sinless now? Others say they are others say that they are saved from hellfire and now on their way to to heaven after they die. Because they have they said a prayer and then um, the pastor said, now you are saved. 
So what is your idea of being saved? The question we want to ask is this ideas of being saved, is it according to what is presented in the Bible or in the books? Is that what the scripture is saying when it, talk, when it says that you will be saved? Is that what the scripture means? All these ideas that we presented and many more, is it the idea of what the scripture said when he said that you will be saved? Let's take a look. A closer look at being saved. The word salvation or to salvage means to save something or someone from perishing with the rest of the group. Yes, it means to save someone or something from perishing with the rest of the group. So to be saved means that one is being preserved from destruction or from perishing with the rest of the group. It has the sense of being rescued from danger or from a, or from a calamitous uh, judgment or a situation. You are rescued from danger. you are rescued from a calamitous situation. That is the idea of being saved, what the Bible is teaching. So, but who, but to who and why is salvation promised? To who and why is salvation promised? Well, let's take a look at the promise of salvation or the promise to be saved and see to who it was made to, made to. In the book of Isaiah chapter 65 verse 8 to 10, there it is written, This is what Yahuwah says, Just as when a new wine is found in a cluster of grapes, and someone says, Do not destroy it, for there is some good in it. So I will do for the sake of my servants. I will not destroy them all. I will bring out of Judah an offspring, and out of Judah, I will bring out of Jacob an offspring, and out of Judah the one to inherit my mountains. Say so my chosen ones will take possession of it, and my servants will reside there. So Sharon will become a pasture for sheep, and the valley of Anchor a resting place for cattle, for my people who search for me. So Yahuwah promised to salvage or to save some of the people of Israel from Jacob and from Judah. He promised to salvage some. He promised that he will not destroy all Israel because of our error. But he will take out of Jacob and out of Judah the ones that will inherit his holy mountain. That is salvation. That is what being saved is. Those people that are taken out or preserved alive from the destruction that will take place among Judah and Israel are the ones that will say we are saved. So that is what being saved is. Yahuwah will preserve and show mercy to some of the descendants of Jacob and of Judah. So Israelites will be salvaged or will be saved from the destruction, the judgment sentence that was upon them.
So Yahuwah the God of Israel promised that he will not destroy all the descendants of Israel for our error. But he will save a remnant that will search that will search for him. A remnant that will return back to him and serve him in his holy mountains and inherit his holy mountains. That is the promise of salvation. Because the wages of sin or of the error of, of the people of Israel is required that all Israel be put to death. But Yahuwah said he's not going to do that. But he will try to save, salvage some of the people of Israel who will return to serve him in his holy mountain. That is being saved. That is what salvation is. So salvation doesn't mean you are salvage and you are going to heaven, no. But we are returning back to the kingdom of our God. To serve our God in his kingdom territory. So the promise of salvation or to be saved is made to the people of Israel first. It is made to those from Israel that we do what is needed or what is required for them to be saved and what is required for us to be saved Israel those who search for their God are the ones that will be saved preserved alive to return back to the holy mountain to serve our God that is what is needed for you to be saved. So it's not just saying, I receive Jesus into your heart. Those who search to know their God are the ones that will be salvaged. So let's progress. Concerning this being concerning this salvation or this being saved, notice what Yahushua the Messiah said in the book of John chapter 4 verse 21 to 22. There is written, Yahushua said to her, that is the Samaritan woman, he said, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. So you worship what you do not know. So we worship what we know because salvation begins with the Jews. So yes, Yahushua told the Samaritan woman that salvation will start with the Jews or the Israelites being saved first. They are the people with the promise of salvation or the promise of to be saved. Because Yahuwah promised to he will gather back, take out of the out of Judah and out of Jacob, a remnant that will return back to their land. <coughs> Remember the Samaritans were not the real occupy the real owners of the inheritance in promised land. But they were taken Israelites were removed from the land and then the Samaritans were brought in to occupy the land. So the people that will return to the land, the holy mountains of Yahuwah and serve him there are the people of Israel, the descendants of Jacob. That's why I told the woman, not in this mountain or in Jerusalem will you people worship God. So salvation will start first with the Jews the true people that will inherit the holy mountains of Yahuwah to serve him there. So salvation will start with first with the serving of Judah and serving of the descendants of Israel. 
the true chosen people and the race to serve Yahuwah in his, in his land, the kingdom territory where our God will return and will dwell forever. So that is what salvation is. The promise of salvation is for the descendants of Israel. And the promise is that God will salvage some of them to return back to their promised land to serve Him. But the question is, are you doing what is needed so that you can be saved, so that you can be salvaged at the end? So salvation or salvage from what? What are we being salvaged from? Why are we being saved? What are we being salvaged for, from? Well, in the book of Isaiah chapter 10, verse 21 to 20, 23, there it is written, Only a remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob to the mighty God, for though your people, O Israel, are as the grain of the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. And extermination has been decided on, and justice will engulf them. Yes, the extermination decided on by the sovereign law, Yahuwah of armies, will be carried out in the entire land. So yes, there is an extermination which is the wages of the sin of Israel that is coming for all unrepentant people of Israel for abandoning their God to go and serve other God the wages is what? death according to the old covenant that is still in place And that extermination is still coming and he says it's going to be carried out in the entire land before this old covenant will be put away for a new covenant. So an extermination has been decided. So even though the people of Israel will multiply among the nations where Yahuwah has scattered us to bear punishment for our error, even though we become as grain of the sand of the sea. <clears throat> at the end, only a few chosen remnant that Yahuwah will choose, they are the ones that will return back to inherit the holy mountains of our God and serve Him. Those that He will choose, those that He will pardon their errors, and those are the ones that will do what is needed for them to be saved. So that's why this was titled, Are You Doing What Is Needed So That You Can Be Saved? So That You Will Be Salvaged At The End. So it is written that only a remnant will be salvaged or will be saved. The rest people of Israel will be exterminated at the end before the old covenant will be will be put to a close for a new covenant. So even though Israel descendants will multiply as the sand of the sea in the lands where they were scattered, only a remnant of them will be saved or given salvation. And these are the ones that will return to Yahuwah in his land to serve him. The rest of the descendants of Israel will be exterminated in the final coming judgment. For an extermination has been decided by the sovereign Lord. For that is the agreement. So are you doing what is needed so that you can be saved? <clears throat> so
So you doing what is needed so that you can be, for you to be saved. Israel descendants who will leave the gods of the nations where they are scattered or given them by the nations, the gods given them by the nations, and research for Yahuwah the God of Israel and return to calling on his name, they are the ones that will be saved. And that is what is needed if you are going to be saved. For Yahuwah said he will scatter Israel among the nations and there we will be serving the gods of the other nations, gods that we do not know. But now that you have been awakened, would you leave the gods of the nations alone and serve for Yahuwah the God of Israel and seek to return to him? Will you leave the gods of the nations and start calling on Yahuwah your God, the God of your forefathers? Those who do will be saved. For in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 21 is written, For everyone who call on the name of Yahuwah, the God of Israel, will be saved. That is what is written. Everyone who leave the gods of the nations alone and call on the name, start calling on the name of Yahuwah and seek and start for Yahuwah our God, will be saved. Every Israel descendant who have faith in Yahushua the Son sent by our God to Israel to, will be saved. Yes. Exercise faith in the Messiah. He came to pass the judgment of the Father. He came and he declared the judgment of the Father. And that judgment that is that Israel is going into a two day punishment or two thousand years punishment. And that is where we are still today in the two thousand year punishment. But it's coming to its end. But everyone who returned to calling on the name of Yahuwah, our God, and search for him, will be saved at the end. For it is written in the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 69 to 75, concerning this, our being saved, or concerning our salvation, it is written, and he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of David, his servant, just as he has spoken through the mouth of his holy prophet from of old, of a salvation from our enemies and from the hands of all, the, all those hating us, to show mercy in connection with our forefathers and to call to mind his holy covenant the oath that he swore to Abraham our forefather to grant us after we have been rescued from the hands of our enemies the privilege of fearlessly rendering sacred service to him with loyalty and righteousness before him all our day. So regarding the Messiah, Yahushua, it was foretold that he is the horn of salvation, the one that God has given so that Israel by means of him will be rescued or be saved from the hands of our enemies. That is, after we have been what? After, after we have been rescued from the hands of our enemies. So. When the Messiah came, he declared that Israel will continue to be in, the, in punishment in the hands of their enemies. But after, Yahushua is the one that will rescue Israel. He is the horn of our salvation. So exercise faith in Yahushua, the Son of God. He is the one to deliver Israel from the hands 
of our enemies at the appointed time when our punishment ends. So, he's the one that we got about Israel to the holy mountains of our God so that we can render sacred service to him all our life. So that is salvation. Those of Jacob that will be what? Salvaged or redeemed to return back to the holy land, the promised land, to render sacred service to our God after our punishment is over. So Yeshua is the one that will save Israel, this Israel's descendants from the hands of our enemies after we have finished serving the imposed slavery and punishment in the hands of our enemies. Just as Yahuwah promised to Abraham when he spoke to Abraham. Yahuwah spoke this long ago to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 verse 13 to 16 when he said, Then he said to Abraham, Know for certain that your offspring will be foreigners in lands not theirs, and that the people there will enslave them and afflict them for 400 years. But I will judge the nations they will serve, and after that they will go out with many goods. As for you, you will go to your forefathers in peace. You will return, you will be buried at a good old age, but they will return here in the fourth generation because the era of the Amorites has not yet reached its full. So Yahuwah made the promise that yes, the descendants of Abraham will be taken to lands not theirs and they will be enslaved in these lands. But in their, in their fourth generation, the time for the, their fourth generation in the promised land, they will do what? Return, they will be salvaged to return to the promised land to serve our God. So Israel, we have been, we are on our third generation in the promised land. But we are kicked out during the time after the death of the Messiah to serve punishment. But the time for our fourth generation in the promised land is coming. But would you be among those that will be salvaged, that will be saved to return to the promised land to serve our Yahuwah our God? If you do what is needed for you, for you to be saved, you will be. So are you doing what is needed to, for you to be saved? Are you doing what is needed for you to be saved? Abraham's chosen offspring, offspring Israel, Abraham's chosen offspring, that is Israel's descendants, will be saved or salvaged for our fourth generation or our fourth cycle of inheriting and possessing the promised land. If you have been following these uh, presentations, or so you can go and check back in some of our presentations, I've made a, one of the, one of the presentations. I explained the fourth generation and explained how Israel has been go, been generated in the promised land. For the will be generated in the fourth promised land until the fourth generation when we will return and inherit the land forever. So check it out if you have not been following uh, this presentation but now. So yes, Israel will be salvaged for us to return 
for the fourth generation in the promised land to serve our God. That is after we have finished serving the punishment on that in the hands of our enemies. In the book of Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 and 5 there is written, And I heard another voice out of heaven say, Get out of her, my people, if you do not want to share with her in her sins, and if you do not want to receive part of her plague, for her sins have massed together clear up to the up to the heavens, and God has called her out of injustice to mind. <clears throat> so Yahuwah is saying that we should get out of her and out of her, the fall out of the empire of false religion. For remember, he said he will scatter Israel among the nations, and among the nations we will be serving false gods, empire of false religions that we do not know. Yes, we have been serving the nations, worshipping their God and serving their God, giving the gods they gave to us. But in this final part of the days, a God said what? Come out of her, all this empire of false religions. Come out of them, my people, so that you do not share in their judgment that is coming. And Israel, we have since have been scattering. We've been into Judaism, uh, Christianity, Muslim, name it Buddhism. We have been into all kind of false religious empire, worshiping the gods of the nations. But the command is that we should come out from among them, so that we do not share in their judgment that is coming for their own judgment is coming so return to seeking Yahuwah your God return to searching for your God return to calling on the name of Yahuwah your God that is what is needed for you to be saved so if you do not want to share in her sin that is the sin of false religion come out from among them search for your own God through the things written call on the name of your own God for your salvation for you to be saved yes Yahuwah wants his people to get out from all the abominations called religion. It's also known as Babylon the Great. If you want to be saved, because his judgment of her is approaching, God is about to judge all false religion and devote them to destruction. So you, the people of Israel, if you do not want to be destroyed along with these false religions, you are being warned to do what? Come out from among them, seek Yahuwah your God, call on the name of Yahuwah your God, and he will save you. Salvation What about the salvation of the other peoples of the nations? Like Yahushua explained to the woman, salvation will start what first? With God saving his people, the Jew, the Israelites. Okay? Out of Jacob and out of Judah. Salvation will start with God saving his people first. But what about the peoples of the other nations? What is written concerning them? Well, 
Yahuwah will execute his judgment on the nations, devoting them to destruction. He said he will execute his judgment on the nations and he will devote them to destruction. But in carrying out his judgment, a remnant of them will be salvaged. Yes, a remnant of the or peoples of the other nations will be salvaged from the calamity that is coming. But will you of the people of other nations do what is needed for you to be saved, be among those that will be salvaged. He said he will judge the nation so as to take out of, the, of them his scattered chosen descendants of Israel to serve him. So he will judge the nations devoting to destruction in order to get out his people that he has chosen to serve him, the descendants of Abraham, the descendants of Israel. He said, these ones will return and be gathered for their fourth generation in the promised land. So his judging of the nation is so that he can get out his people to return back to serve him. So, yes, the nations will be judged, and there will be a remnant of the peoples of the nations that will survive, that will be salvaged. You, the people of the nations, will you be among the ones that will be salvaged, or that will be saved? You will be if you do what is needed for you, for you to be salvaged. Uh, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 25, verse 31 to 33, concerning the judgment that is coming upon the nations, this is what is written. A noise will resound to the ends of the earth, for Yahuwah has a controversy with the nations, so he will personally pass judgment on all human, and he will put to the wicked to the sword, declares Yahuwah. This is what Yahuwah of Ami says. Say, look, a calamity is spreading from nation to nation, and a great tempest will be unleashed from the remotest part of the earth. And those slain by Yahuwah in that day will be from one end of the earth clear to the other ends of the earth. So they will not be mourned nor will they be gathered up or buried. So they will become like manure to the surface of the ground. So Yahuwah will judge the ends of the earth and he will pass personally pass judgment as to who will be saved and who will be put to death. Will you be among the ones that will be what? salvaged or be saved, will be saved or would you be among those that will be put to death you can be salvaged if you do what is needed for you to be saved yes you the people of the nations can be saved but if you do what is needed what is required for you to be saved. And you may be asking, what is it that you, the people of the nations, require so that you can be saved? What is ne so what is needed for the peoples of the other nations to be saved? Well, in the book of Zechariah chapter 8, verse 20 to 23, there it is written, this is what Yahuwah of Ami says, It will yet come to pass that peoples and the inhabitants of many cities will come, and the inhabitants of one city will see go to those of the another city and say, Let us earnestly go to beg 
for the favor of Yahuwah and to seek Yahuwah of armies. I am also going, and many peoples and mighty nations will go, will come to seek Yahuwah of armies in Jerusalem and beg for the favor of Yahuwah. This is what Yahuwah of Ami says. In those days, ten men out of, the, of, out of all the languages of the nations will take hold. Yes, they will take hold, firm hold of the robe of a Jew, saying, We want to go with you, for we have heard that God is with you people. So yes, it's written, and it was foretold that ten men out of every language will take the skirt of a Jew, an Israelite, and say, we will go with you because we know that God with, is with you, and we have seen that God is with you. So these ten men out of every language are the ones that have recognized who the true people of God is. And they are willing to to allow this this um, the people of God to lead them because they say they will take hold of the skirt of a Jew and say we will go with you. So these have recognized the people that God is dealing with, the people that God have chosen to serve to serve Him, and they are willing to go or follow the lead of these ones in order to serve Yahuwah the true God. So yes, ten men out of every language of the nations will be saved. For will be saved and this and there with this will join, follow or allow an Israelite to lead them. Yes Ten men of, out of every language of the nations will be saved. Uh, and these are the ones that will allow an Israelite or Judah to lead them. So yes, these are the ones who recognize the true chosen ones of Yahuwah, the God of Israel. And these are the ones, individuals who who are willing to go with them to serve the God of Israel because God is with them. Ten men out of every language on earth will be saved. In the book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 to 10, there is written, After this I saw and look, a great crowd which no man was able to number, out of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, dressed in white robe, and there were palm branches in their hands, and they keep shouting and with a loud voice saying, Salvation we owe to our God and to and the one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. So this great crowd, or, or which is in Zechariah, he called them ten men out of every language. But in the book of Revelation, John saw them as a great crowd. They are taken from saved from every tribe and tongue. But they acknowledge that their salvation or they were saved because of our God. Because our God chose to do what? To pardon them, to show mercy favor upon them and not destroy them with the rest of the people of the earth. But he chose to salvage them Ten men out of every language. It is a great crowd. Perhaps in John's time, he, nobody was able to know how many languages that we have on earth. There's another video that I've talked about how many 
that will be salvaged. Uh, I think why 144,000 Israelites will be salvaged. Check that video out and you will understand the, the 10 men and the great crowd, what their number is and what God is doing. So this is what is needed for you, the people of the nations, to be saved. Recognize the, who the true God is. Recognize who this, his people are. The people that he is dealing with. Recognize the ones that he's using and be willing to go with them in order to serve the will of the true God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. If you do what is needed, you will be what? Saved. You will be saved when he brings the final judgment because he said he will personally pass judgment on all humans. Those who are willing of the people of the nations to serve the God of the true God. Just like Israel has believed the false gods of the nations to serve the true God and call on the name of the true God for our salvation. You, the people of the nations, will leave the false gods of the nations and recognize that the true God is with the people of Israel and be willing to go with the people of his chosen people of Israel to serve the God of Israel. If you do those things, you, the peoples of the nations, will also obtain salvation. So, in conclusion, salvation is first for the chosen offspring of Abraham, that is, Israel descendants who are serving their imposed slavery and punishment among the nations. They are the ones that salvation is for. They are the ones that will be saved first. So, those of Israel who search for and return to calling on the name of Yahuwah our God are the ones that will obtain salvation. The remnant of the other peoples of the nations who recognize the true chosen, pe true chosen race and people and are willing to go with them and be, and be led by them will also obtain salvation. All these ones will also be saved. So salvation is for those who have replaced. Salvation is not for those who have replaced the people of Israel, the true people of Israel, or those who have neglected them as the chosen race. Those who neglected the true people of Israel serving the will of God as the chosen race and have called other people the chosen people. Salvation is not for them. But those who recognize the chosen race who are serving the punishment imposed on them and are willing to go to them with them to serve their true God, those are the ones that will obtain salvation. But the rest of the people who or people of the nation who have neglected or have said, okay, no, these are not the people, or have replaced them with other, another people as the people of the chosen people. Salvation is not for them. In the book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 11 to 12, there is written, In the day I will raise up the boat of David that is falling. I will repair the breaches. And I will restore its ruins. I will rebuild it as in the days of long ago, so that they may take possession of what is remaining of Edom, and all the nations on whom my name has been called, declares Yahuwah, who is doing all this. So Yahuwah promised that he would do what? Raise the boot of David or the house of David that has fallen, that is the nation of Israel, 
He said he's going to raise it back up and he's going to repair his breaches and he will restore his ruins and he will rebuild it as in the days of long ago. He said so that Israel will take possession of whatever is left of Edom after the final judgment. And all the nations on whom my name has been called, where Israel have gone to bear punishment. Among these nations, God's name is being made known to you. So Israel will return and take possession after the judgment of Edom and all the nations. And whatever is remaining, the ten men of the nation of every language that will remain, Israel will take possession of them. And Israel will lead these ones that will be salvaged from the earth after the final judgment. So Yahuwah said he is the one doing all these things. So that is what being saved is. That is what being saved will mean for the chosen ones that will receive the mercy of Yahuwah our God. There will be one salvaged from the earth. There will be the one salvaged or saved from the final judgment of that our God will carry out on earth at the appointed time. So are you doing what is needed or what is required for you as, for you to be saved? If you do, if you pay attention to what is written, you will be saved at the end. Until I come to you with another presentation, keep praying and keep seeking Yahuwah for your salvation. Thank you.